Helical piles, what are they? How do they work? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And most importantly, is Brandon comfortable? Let's find out today on Smith House. I'm fat. My pants keep falling down. I feel real uncomfortable right now. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. So we just finished putting in our deep foundation using helical piles for our Belleville Modern Farmhouse and the install went off without a hitch. Very happy with the install. We used some guys called Be Right There Anchor Services out of Houston. Hashtag not sponsored. They haven't paid me a dime. I paid them a lot of money to do this work. Everything's on the up and up. I am not influenced by whatever, but they're great guys. They're veteran owned. Go check them out if you're interested in this. I fully endorse their work. They did a great job for me. So helical piles, what are they? Well, they are a pile system that uses screws, uh, helixes that pull this pile down into the ground. So as we apply a torque on the top, it twists and it screws itself down into the ground. What's really cool about this is I know that if I put enough pressure on this, enough torque on this, if I put 5,900 pounds feet of torque to be exact, I get 70,000 pounds of capacity out of this design that we're using for this house. Now that capacity is based on both the torque that I apply as well as the, the, as well as the design of the pile. If I have two helixes like this and their diameters are eight and 10, then I get 70,000 pounds of capacity. As I add more helices, as I increase the diameter of those helices, then I get more load capacity. So I can go up to like seven of these um, screws and I can increase their size and they're going to be able to have more load capacity on them. We use them all the time over in oil and gas and put very big equipment that vibrate and shake and try to rip themselves out of the ground. So these have to be very, very strong. For a house, psh, this is easy stuff. How do they work? Well, they transfer the load from the house as it's pushing down, they transfer the load down to the shaft and the shaft is held in place by both friction against the shaft as well as friction against this helix there. Um, a pile differentiates from a pier in that a pile is held in by friction and the load is transferred all around the soil around it. A pier has everything excavated out and is transferring all of the load to the bottom of the pier so that if we had a bell pier here, we'd excavate all the soil out and it would only be bearing on the soil underneath the bottom of the pier to where a pile transfers that load all the way down through the shaft. Now, when we're putting these in, we have to have 5,900 pounds feet of torque for at least three feet. We don't wanna just punch through like we did here. It started building and then the, the torque dropped off again because we punched through this hard soil and it took us another little ways before we found that, um, that stable load bearing soil again. The advantages. We have a known bearing capacity. I know that if I put this much torque on this type of pile, I get 70,000 PSI. And I also know that I get that regardless of how deep I go. So for example, on this little bitty foundation that we did, it's about 1800 square foot foundation. One of our piles only went in seven feet before we hit our required torque and depth. So we started building torque at four feet and we held that for three feet. So at seven feet, we're done we have hit our required torque and our required depth and seven feet was good. We moved over 15 feet and this pile here took 18 feet to hit our same load bearing soil conditions. We hit it at first at about the same height then it started building and then it dropped off again and we went back through soft soil until we found that good load bearing soil again at 18 feet down. So it's important to remember that because just because the surface of the soil looks flat and just because you've taken soil samples around that give you an estimate of what you might think is in the middle, the soil samples will only show you what that one coring was like. It can't tell you anything about anything around it. It's only that one coring. So if you were doing a pier system and we said, you know what, we're getting load bearing soil at seven feet. Let's go down to 10 feet and it's going to be fine. 
well, we would have soft soil here that this pier would be setting on. Or inversely, if we said, hey, we have load-bearing soil at 18 feet, let's go down to 20 feet and we'll be fine. Well, what if you have another, say, a water table or something that comes up in a different section of the foundation that that pier is sitting on and starts sinking down? So I love the known bearing capacity of every single pile. It's like we took a soil sample at every single pile and custom engineered it just for that pile, which would be incre incredibly expensive. But this is super cheap. We just watch our torques and once we have the torque and the depth that we need maintaining that torque we know that we're good speed of install we started this on wednesday morning and we were finished by thursday night if we would have done a little bit better job with if i would have done a little bit better job with laying this out in the beginning the guys could have come in and installed all of this in a day about 29 piles in a day very fast and not only the speed of the install but i'm able to start framing right away they, they finished the night before and I've got framing crews out there the very next day throwing on my beams across these piles and we're rolling. I don't have to have a dirt crew coming in, moving a bunch of dirt out, bringing a bunch of dirt in, doing a bunch of compaction, then digging out all of the beams and the concrete guys coming in, doing all of their forms and then the plumbers and electricians and everybody being there to pour the slab and then wait for that to cure and then put on my framing. I'm able to go from deep foundation straight to framing and while my framers are there, my electricians and my plumbers are roughing in everything underneath because everything is open. I like the speed of install. Minimum side impact, I hinted to that a little bit earlier. We didn't have to excavate anything. We didn't have to take the soil out. We just put it right through what used to be a pasture and is now going to be a home. Very uh, easy to do, very convenient to do. And it's pretty green too, because I'm not wasting all this diesel and all this transport and have to worry about getting rid of cuttings with this system. Um, and then it's a simple way to get a raised foundation because we used a large enough pipe that will give me 20 inches of um, of exposed pipe outside of the ground. I can put my house right on top of that and I've got a nice raised floor foundation with a crawl space underneath. You can go higher than that, but as you go higher than that, you have to go much bigger with your pile, which drives your price up. If you were going higher than that, I would just cap your pile off at the ground and do a different system up above it, just a simple, um, you know, a blocking system or pier and beam system. But instead of putting it just on the ground that can shift and move, you're going way deep and you're locking yourself into good soil bearing um, or good load bearing soil. The disadvantages, it might not work well in rocky conditions. Um, you can't use this in places where the average size of the aggregate is greater than uh, 75 percent of the space of your helix so if you have a three inch pitch on your screw then you need to stay with rock sizes under say two inches in order for this work so if you live somewhere with very short very shallow uh, bedrock or in a really rocky condition this might not be your solution um, and it's also hard to bid exactly because on this case, we only use the lead screw and we were done. But on this, we've got a lead screw and two extensions. Every one of those extensions cost nearly as much as the lead screw because you've got all of that material there. Um, so it's going to add to your cost the deeper that you go. And because soil conditions change so drastically across there, it's very hard to estimate exactly how, much, how many extensions you're going to need. Um, in our case, we bid it out assuming that we were going to have two extensions per lead screw. We didn't end up needing that. In fact, we were about eight short. So we were actually came out, we actually came out ahead of our estimate, but it could have easily gone the other way. We could have gone four per lead screw and had to pay more at the end because we used more material. So keep that in mind when you're looking at doing this system. It's not going to be as easy as getting a hard bid. It's sort of a estimate and then we'll wait and see how it works. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I could talk about this a lot more and I will be talking about it a lot more, specifically about slab on grade in the Gulf Coast area and all of the cracking and settling issues that I'm sure if you live there, you know about. I've lived in three houses that I've had to do foundation repairs on. 
Um, so it's a big, it's a big issue. I don't want to do that when I'm building my own houses for people. I would rather get it right from the beginning. And this right now is my favorite solution for that area. Comment below if you loved raised floors. Comment below if you hate slabs. Comment below if it's the inverse of that. Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over our social media pages at Smith House Co. and at Jordan Smith and Builds. We've got a Facebook page that we're doing some stuff on now. And the website is coming someday. And we'll see you next time on Smith House. All right, so I'm not supposed to be in here, but I broke into the skid, skier, skid steer here. And you can see on each one of these piles, we have everything. We have the planned um, depth, we have the planned topography, all kinds of stuff. And then he's actually writing down how deep we went with each one of these piles and what torques he's given us because he's able to know off of the torques how much um, surface or how much lateral vertical pressure we're able to withstand and then he's taking it here but there's a monitor right here that shows us how much torque and how much uh, i'm gonna have to ask you to step out of this kid's steer sir uh you're not qualified to operate this machine and uh, i appreciate your your candor but thank you for getting out